Hey guys, this is Gary, and um, this time I want to walk you through the uh, unique situation where you are importing from a camera card. So basically, right now you're looking at the library module in Lightroom. I want to show you one quick preference for Lightroom as it pertains to camera cards. Show import dialog when a memory card is detected. If that's checked, when you put in a memory card, Lightroom will automa automatically launch the import dialog box. Now, I already have a memory card mounted on my desktop. So, I'm going to click import. Up pops the import dialog box. It's not uh, in and of itself a module. It's simply the import window, how, whatever you want to call it. I don't really care. All right. So, it automatically saw my card, which is called EOS underscore digital. And it's showing me all the photos on my card. Now, I can audition these photos singularly uh, by clicking down here on this button. This would be the loop view. So I can look at the, there's my dog. I can look at these images uh, individually and audition them and then uncheck the ones I don't want. Now, obviously, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. And I don't want that. So I'm going to start with the actual photo shoot. All right. So I'm going to take all these. And um, let's go back to the grid view. Now, normally, I don't select the images that I'm bringing in uh, from the card. I just usually bring them all in. But I wanted to show you that that's an option that you have. Now, I shoot Canon and I shoot RAW. And the file extension is .cr2. Now, you notice up here that I've already selected copy as DNG. You can just choose copy. If you just choose copy, Lightroom will not convert them to DNG. And your, your upload or your transfer from the card to your machine will go a little quicker. I like the DNG format. I'm committed to it. So I'm going to choose copy as DNG. Okay, so basically, whenever you insert a camera card over here in the From column, it should see your camera card, but if it doesn't, then you can select it over here in this column. Um, now, I've got eject after import checked. If I uncheck it, it won't eject my card. If I check it, it'll eject my card. It won't physically eject it from the card reader. It will basically unmount it from the desktop, and then I can pull it from my card reader. All right, so that's pretty simple. Then in the middle here, this is what am I going to do to these photos? Well, Basically, you have two choices, copy as DNG or copy. All right. So then we come over here to this side. Now, this is where it gets confusing. And this is where I want to try and help you guys um, understand all of the stuff over here. Okay. So basically, file handling. Now, if yours is, if your interface might look something like this where all of these sections are closed. So if you click this arrow, you twirl down file handling. I recommend render previews as minimal. Now, the downside of that is whenever you're ready to edit an image in the develop module, Lightroom is going to take a couple seconds to create a full-size preview that you can then edit. That's fine with me. If I choose either standard or one-to-one, the um, copy to DNG uh, function is going to take a lot longer. It's already taken a relatively long time because it's converting the DNG on the way in. Now, embedded in sidecar, I cannot think of a scenario where anybody will want to choose embedded and sidecar. Nonetheless, Adobe could or they wouldn't have provided it. I'm going with minimal because it speeds up my transfer. Okay. Um, this is new in five. If you're not, if you're not using five, this option isn't available to you. If I check build smart previews, then uh, Lightroom will create previews whereby even if my drive is not connected, I will be able to work on these images. If you work on a laptop, I think that's a great addition because you could actually edit your images even when the drive in which that image resides isn't even connected to your laptop. So that's really cool. But for me, I'm going to turn it off because I'm not on my laptop. I'm on my desktop machine. All right. Don't import suspected duplicates. Just have always 
it's always have that checked. Make a second copy too. If you check this, Lightroom will uh, make a second copy to a backup. Now, I have a network drive, which because my power went out uh, recently, I forgot to turn it back on. So it's not available to me. And that's normally where I would send these backup copies to. But I'm going to uncheck it for now. All right, so I'm done with the file handling module. Let's go to file renaming. Now, uh, as you can see, all of these files have bizarre names. So, yes, I want to change the name. I'm going to change it to, in this case, uh, portrait underscore shoot. Um, and then I want the start number to be one. That's fine. And I'm done with that. Okay, apply during import. Develop settings, always choose none. There, there's just no reason that I can think of why you would want to import develop settings. You can always do it later on. It's kind of the whole point of the develop module, right? All right, metadata. I have a metadata file called my data. It has my name, my website, my copyright information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when these photos come in, my metadata will be written to the file itself. Keywording. Now, Keywording is kind of funny. Um, you have to be careful with this. I actually don't recommend adding keywords when you're coming in off of a card. You know, the whole point of keywording is to have some kind of search strategy. So keywording is important. Having a keyword strategy is important. I just don't think this is the best place to do that. Okay. Normally, um, I would just leave this blank because I can always add the keywords later on. All right, so that's pretty easy. Now it gets a little complicated, so I'm going to close this. Destination. Look at all this stuff here. Well, these are the four drives that are connected to my machine, okay? This is my photos drive. That's the one I want. Now, at the top of the destinations section, you have a couple choices. You can import by date or import into one folder. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Um, if you decide to go with import by date, then that's fine, except you really have to be careful where your Lightroom photos are stored. Now, as many folders as you see here, all of my photos that are organized by date are in one master folder called LR underscore photos right here. So if I click on that, it automatically opens up and you can see I have a hierarchy that Lightroom created for me. I have images going back to 2006 all the way up to this year. And because I chose organize by date up here, organize by date, the date format is the year, the month, the day in numericals. When I come down here, Lightroom Photos, that's my master folder. Lightroom takes care of the rest. I shot these images on July 24th, 2003. Lightroom found my 2000, I'm sorry, 2013, not 2003. Lightroom found my 2013 folder. It found my July folder and created a folder for the day 24, July 24th. And this little plus sign means these are where the images are going to go. Now, I shot 110 images total. Up here, you can see that I don't want to bring in five of them. So it's bringing in 105. So Lightroom is basically managing everything. Sometimes I will choose into one folder. Now, in that case, I'm probably not going to choose Lightroom photos as much sense as that makes. Let's say I just want to have a folder for this model. And I want to have it at the root level of this photo's hard drive. Well, I can go organize into one folder. And in this case, the folder would be photos, which is actually the drive. And then into subfolder. And I'm going to name it, for now, I'm just going to name it model. Okay? So now if you look down here, here's this folder called model. When I click import, all these images are going to be thrown into this folder called model. Okay, so that's easy. You might like that better. 
then organize by date. I'll tell you what, doing it this way, if, if you have some kind of handle on your file organization system, um, this is probably the least um, susceptible to confusion and mayhem. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me go back. I'm going to uncheck model, and let's see if that goes away. It's gone. I'm going to go back to organize by date. I'm going to choose my Lightroom Photos folder. Everything is hunky-dory. It's exactly what I want. But watch what happens if I choose another folder. I'll choose this HDR folder. Now, Lightroom is performing the same hierarchy, year, month, day. But inside this HDR folder, that's not where I want it. I want this to exist in my folder that I already have set up to organize by date. That's my Lightroom folder. Okay, so I click on that again, and we're back to normal. So here's what I want to say about this. As long, if you, if you choose organize by date, always, and I mean always, choose the root level of your date organizational hierarchy, okay? If you don't do that, you're going to get really confused really quickly, which is why um, several well-known instructors advise to never choose organize by date. I'm not one of those. I actually love organized by date. It works great. It just saves me a bunch of time. <coughs> so, the easiest way to avoid that happening where you accidentally choose a different folder or forget that you have to choose your root folder of the folders that are organized by date is to create an import preset. So, if you create, if you go save current settings as new preset, I'm going to call this by uh, date underscore C dash card for camera card by date underscore C dash card. Whoops, I guess I can't spell. That tells me that this is a import preset for when I import from the card. And if I go create now down here, it says by date. The next time I import from my card, I don't have to do anything over here. I don't have to do anything anywhere. Copy as DNG is already selected. The only thing I might want to do is select which images I'm going to import. But I almost never do that. So basically, it would be as simple as the card, then making sure that by date underscore C card is selected, and hitting import. That takes a couple seconds. So these import presets are really great. And as you get you know, farther along in Lightroom, you will create custom import presets for your different scenarios. The most common and most often used import setting for me is from my camera card. And I like to, for the most part, organize from my camera card by date. If I decide I want to change that and organize by, um, by into one folder, okay, then I can do that, right? Now, wherever I put that folder, it's going to be in the Lightroom underscore photos right now. Or if I choose the root level, which is the drive itself, it'll throw those images all into the root level, which I don't want. So I would always check in the subfolder and give it a name. Okay? Here's one little gotcha about by date, which you should know about as well. Okay, so I'm back to by date. Click Lightroom folders, which is the root folder of my date organization. That's the golden rule of Lightroom. Always choose the root folder when you're organizing by date. Always, always, always. And Lightroom will do the rest. But let's say I choose a different format. What happens then? Let's say I want to go 2003 July spelled out. Well, now all of a sudden, it's creating a new July folder spelled out July 24th. Well, it's not what I want. So once you come up with a date format, you got to stick with it, right? So just stick with what you originally chose and you'll be fine. So, all right, thus ends this video on importing from the camera card. I hope you found it useful. See you next time.